him down. How can I let him down? He's so good to me. God is good. God is good. God is good to me. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. Listen to this now. He saved my soul. He made me whole. He turned my life around. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. God is good. God is good. God is good to me. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. My God is good. 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 God is good. God is good. God is good to me. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. He saved my soul. He saved my soul. He makes me whole. He turned my life around. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Good morning, Westchester. Would you please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. We gather here this day to hear God's word for us. Lord, we thank you for the blessings you pour on us. Lord, fill our hearts with praise and our lives with your love. Lord, encourage us and empower us to do your will. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is All Creatures of Our God and King. Opening prayer. O oh God, our guide and guardian, you have led us apart from the busy world into the quiet of your house. Grant us grace to worship you in spirit 
and in truth to the comfort of our souls and the upbuilding of every good purpose and holy desire. Enable us to do more perfectly the work to which you have called us, that we may not fear the coming of night when we shall resign into your hands the task which you have committed to us. So may we worship you not with our lips at this hour, but in the word and deed all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, amen. amen. The Lord's Prayer. Good morning, children. Good morning to the children who are worshiping with us uh, via social media. Good morning to my beautiful Westchester Methodist Church family. Good morning. Good morning. Who started school already? No one? Are you starting school next week or the following week? The second. The second. Okay. Okay. Are you ready for school? Yes. 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 Oh, what are some of the things that you're going you're gonna to take with you to school? What are some of the things? I used to play games with it on the computer. You're going to take your computer? Some, okay. What else are you going to take with you? What do you need? Okay, think about it and I'll get right back to you, okay? Binders, notebooks, um, pencil cases, um, a lunchbox, a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> good, good, good. Oh, my teacher brings them to me. Say that again? My teacher brings them to me. I don't need to bring it. But do you need your backpack? Yeah. Okay, so that's something you're going to take. What else do you need? 
Do you, what else do you need to take with you? Toys you have. Say that again? Toys I have. Toys? Yeah. You could take toys with you. Lucky you. Oh, right. <laughs> um, take a good attitude with you. Oh, wow, yes. Take a good you wanna make You want to make a first, you want to make a good first impression on their last, yeah. especially for me since it's my last year at my school. Okay, so I'm taking that you're in the fifth grade. You're going to the fifth grade? No, I'm going to the eighth grade. The eighth grade? Time flies, sorry, but yes, okay, great. Take a good attitude. All right, so here it is. There's one more important thing that you need to take with you. One more important thing. You may not be able to see it, but you can feel it, and he has done great things for you. And who is that? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Do you know that when you take him with you, you are able to be stronger. You feel more good within yourself. There's nothing, nothing that comes in the way will make you feel uncomfortable, right? Because you know you have who with you? Who do you have with you? Tracy? Who? We have God with you. God, yes. We have God with us. Who wants to take God with them where they go? Raise your hand. Who wants to take God with them where they go? Yes, wherever you go, you take God with you, right? Joshua, in the Bible, Joshua, I believe it's chapter 5, verse 1. He said that he will stand with you. He will not forsake you. He will be there for you, just like he was with Moses, right? He'll never leave us. Now, it gets kind of tricky, right? And ner sometimes you get a little nervous when you're going to school for the first day, going back to school, new friends, new classroom, right? Right? So I have a little song because I want you to know that Jesus is real. Jesus is real, right? Right. So there's a song that we're going to sing together. And it says, real, real, real. Jesus is real to me. Right? And Brother Savage is going to help us with this song, right? Yes. And I would like for you to join, okay? We're going to say, sing it a few times. Ready? And I need you to help me too, church family. Real, real, real. Jesus, real to me. But I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. Do you think you can do this? Can you say this? Real, real. Say real, real. Real, real. real. Jesus, real to me. Okay, that's, all I, that's the part I want to hear because he gives you what? Did you hear? The victory. The victory, right? So I want to hear you guys sing it so loud, right? Brother Savage, over there, he's going to, he's going to play it again, okay? Ready? Real, real. Jesus is real to me. I love him because he gave me the victory. Some people think to doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. One more time. Real, real, real. He's so real to me. I love him. He's so real to me. Some people doubt him, but I can't live without him. So what, what did I ask you to take with you? What should you take with you starting school? What are you going to take? Everyone together. Jesus. Jesus. God, we're going to take him with us, right? Yes. Wherever we go, right? Okay. We have things that are important. We have our book bags. We have our pencil. And we have God with us, right? I was going to say something about this. Talk loud. 
You have to stand up for the bullies. No, you have to stand up uh -huh. for the. You cannot let the bullies get. They can't hear you. Gotta talk to the microphone. No, that's fine. You said we have to stand up for the what? Or just stand up. So you have to stand up for the. You have to stand up for the people uh -huh. that need help, like, like standing up. Like. You support helping them? Yeah, helping people about, like, like, ev like everybody has, like, a bully in school. Every, so a bully to, in school. Yes, and one of the things you got to do, you said. You let them, we, we have to stand up for them. Yes, we have to stand up for them. And guess who's going to stand for you when you stand up for them? God will stand up, yes. I need a car. If we go to the carnival, I just go there. You want to go to the carnival before you go back to school? I want to go on a vacation before I go back to work, too. But mm, let's see. I'm going to pray to God, right? Amen. Thank you, everyone, for being so great. All right, so we're going to stand up and pray, okay? Heavenly Father, we give you all the praises. We thank you for this blessed day. We thank you for the children that are here right now, dear God. As they journey back to school, dear God, I ask you, dear God, to cover them, bless them, guide them. Let them know that you're real, dear God. Let them have that big heart to welcome people, their, their, their peers, their friends, their classmates. Welcome them. Be nice. Be kind. Be loving. Give them the strength and protect them, dear God. We ask of this in your wonderful name, Jesus Christ, our Father and Savior. Amen. 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 I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I will find you with words from my mouth.
honor my brother, my sister. Thank you. You're walking up the King's Highway. Thank you, my brother. Thank you for your ministry and music. So it's that time of, in our service when we respond to God's generosity to us. And we say this every Sunday. Located in the back and the front of the sanctuary are buckets for your tithes and offerings to cover current expenses and our portion there. Every first, second, and third Sundays, located in the front at the altar is the scholarship fund basket. Every fourth and fifth Sundays, located in the front at the altar, is the Van Ministry Fund bucket. So, what is this tithes and offering we talk about every Sunday? Well, I think we know. A tithe is a specific amount, 10% of your income that you give first. An offering is anything extra that you give beyond that. Praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Now, Jesus endorses tithing, but expects his followers to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees whom he encouraged to continue tithing. Matthew 23 and 23. So I encourage you today to tithe. I encourage you before you tithe to speak to God about it. He will lead you and guide you. And when you give, give with a cheerful heart. Thank you, Jesus, that we are able to give. With that, let us pray. Gracious God, we are grateful for this day that we are here worshiping together on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. We just want to give praise and honor to your name. We want to magnify and glorify your precious name. And thank you that we are able to give. Most importantly, we thank you that you provide for us whether we give or not. So, Father God, today, bless these, your dear children, and help us to be covenant keepers as we continue with our tithes and our offering. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, amen. amen. Good morning, church. The first lesson is taken from Genesis chapter 35, verse 1 to 15. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep, you, and keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made, made me a father to Prara and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not, will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the ears of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. 
You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked to him. This is the end of the Old Testament reading. Thank you. Would you please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel lesson? The reading comes from Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Ty and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as, as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. May the Lord bless the listeners, the hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. We will now have music ministry by Brother Hezekiah. And after that, we will have the word from Reverend Beverly Hodges Fairweather. I've had many tears and sorrows, had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I've been no right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation. But my trials come to only make me strong. And I've been a lot of places. And I've seen a lot of faces. There have been times I felt so all alone. But in my lonely hours, yes, those precious lonely hours, Jesus let me know that I was his own. Through it all, through it all, trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. Oh, I've learned to depend upon his word. I thank God for the mountains and I thank him for the valleys and I
thank him for the storms he brought me through. For if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that he could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in God could do. Through it all, through it all, oh, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Trust in God through it all, through it all. Oh, I've learned to depend upon His word. Oh, I've learned to depend upon His word. Oh, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Trust in Jesus, I've learned to trust in God. to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. You know, if, if I, 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 sometimes you don't know that you have problems because you think it's going, everything is going run smoothly. But things make a turn the other way. Right? And God solved them for you. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. So that brings me to my sermon, which says there's a bright side. Amen, amen. So no matter how life is dull, and you're dismayed, and you do not know where to turn next, there is a bright side. Amen. Always a bright side. So what is life? You know, we always strive towards getting uh, to the bright side because life is so dull, so we do all sorts of things to get to the bright side because we always want to be winners, yes? And are you a winner this morning? You must be a winner because you are here. Yeah. Give yourself a round of applause and then give God a round of applause because you are a winner. We are all winners this morning. You see, there's no limit on when or how long it takes for God to deliver or grant us his blessings. The Bible tells us that if we put our lives in the hands of God, he's able to show us a bright side. He will deliver us from our fears of helplessness and despair 
and uh, all that that threatens the path of our lives, whatever we encounter, God promises us a bright side. But sometimes we are very impatient and we want to go to the bright side, which is not the right side. So God show us a different side. So this today's sermon is from the Genesis story that was so capably read by young master Jaden Meyer. Genesis 45, 1 to 15. I will lift up a few verses for your hearing. Verses 3 through 8. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you for a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Let us pray. Eternal and righteous God, I thank you for granting me this platform that I can send your message to your people. Thank you for the senior pastor, Reverend Gordon A.R. Edwards, for giving me the opportunity to say, yes, I will preach today. So let the words of my mouth and the medication of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So as I said, my sermon is from the Genesis story. I will commence with the back story of Joseph, just to remind you about what happened before all of this. That Joseph was one of Jacob's son, but he was the favorite one. He was so favorite that the others knew because I don't know how wise it was for Jacob to tell the others or let the others be aware that Joseph was the favorite. I don't know how wise it is for your parents to tell you that you are the favorite or you think you are the favorite of your brothers and sisters. Hey, Sister Denise, are you the favorite? <laughs> Okay, so some people think they are the favorite. Some others think they are the favorite. Anyway, Joseph knew that he was the favorite. One of the reasons why he knew that he was the favorite because his father, I don't know what he was thinking, but his father gave him a pretty coat can you imagine he got a pretty coat and he was such a show off that he showed it off to his brothers and said, na, 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 I got a pretty coat, I got a pretty coat, you didn't get one, you didn't get one, I got a pretty coat. How do you think the brothers would feel? Ma, 
had, they were jealous, they felt irritated. How dear my father gave you such a pretty coat, and I didn't get one. But that was not all. You see, they were angry and angrier and angrier. And to make matters worse, Joseph had dreams. And he was so sure of that he told the, his brothers what the dreams were all about. That I am going to lord it over you and you are going to bow down to me. That makes matters worse. Now they were irritated. They said, really? No way. You got to be kidding. All this that you got to show that you are the favorite, they were annoyed. So guess what? They plotted to kill him. We have to get rid of this little show of rot. I'm going to call him rot. Maybe he was small, I don't know. So they thought he was so cocky that they planned to get rid of him. So to cut a long story short, these are the plans that they had. Plan number one, we are going to throw him in a pit. God said, you know what? I have a brighter side for that. I have a plan for that. Plot number two, they sold him to some wayfarers. And according to Elizabeth Warren, I have a plan for that. The wayfarer sold him again to Potiphar's household. So he was sold twice. God said, I have a plan for that. You see, when God's ways are higher than our ways, you know what's going to happen. God is going to show you a bright side. So the brothers didn't know that God's ways are higher than their ways. So there was always also a plan for. He went to prison. Why did he go to prison? Because Pharaoh's wife told a lie on him. And you know, when you tell a lie on people, that's not good for you. So... There comes another one, but God said, I have a plan for that too. So why would God allow such bad things to happen to Jacob's favorite son? God is now going to put his plan into effect. He always does. Amen. So whatever you do, whatever you hear, whatever is happening to you, God can put his plan into effect Amen. and bring you through. So, we can remember later in the Bible we read about God's plan. God had a plan for Daniel when he was in the lion's den. He had a plan for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He had a plan for Rahab, the harlot, who became the foreparent of Jesus Christ. He also had a plan for Job, who became a stand-up person for God. He will not curse God. So, here it comes. He had a plan for all these people. His plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. And so remember that although thing, bad things may happen to you, God will always bring you through. Just ask him to help you to discern and you will accept. At times it seems as if it is impossible for you to handle certain things. The songwriter said, I can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Another one said, 
It's a hard road to travel, a mighty long way to go. So when we get into the ditch or when we get into a pit, God will pull us out of the pit. He's not going to leave you there. So just turn to God and ask him, pull me out of this pit. Show me the way and I will follow. So I'm here to tell you today that God is, it is God who has a bright side waiting for us. God had a bright side waiting for Joseph. God had a bright side waiting for Daniel. God had a bright side waiting for Paul. When he was Saul, he used to persecute the Christians. But God turned him around and showed him a brighter way. We cannot do things for ourselves. It wasn't the 11 brothers who sent Joseph to prosperity. It was God. God's plan is always in the back there, but sometimes we want to hurry up God. So we can't hurry him up. He's going to work on his own timetable. It was God who placed Joseph there. He ensured them that it is God who sent him there. He said, but God. So no matter what trials you are going through, he will give you a song of victory. It is beyond our power to make it right. God will not leave us in a state of despair and helplessness. A bright side is provided when we remain faithful. God's bright side is ahead of what evil is around the corner. His bright side is ahead of us. Have you ever been surprised by grace? You must have been. Because whatever you think is going to happen, that didn't happen. But grace rescued you. Grace set you free. Grace brought you through. You did not expect it but surprise surprise god has something there for you a brighter path mm. not this way god that is the way i want like joseph brothers we have our own game plan we are expecting a special outcome but like saul we got an unexpected encounter so Jesus says, enter into the narrow gate that leads to eternal life. Don't follow the pretty path, the path that looks good. Because I have a better road for you. If there's a time when you thought that something positive would never happen, hang on. The time is turning. The unexpected bright side is imminent. God's timing doesn't always coincide with our time. God is working it out on his own timetable. Grace will be extended to us. Answers will be given in unbelievable ways. Say, God, this is the situation. Just take it over for me. Show me what you would like me to do next. You just stay in the game. Stay engaged. God will open the door as he opened the door for Joseph. In every situation he faced, God did not answer exactly as the brothers wanted. Surprise, surprise. God came up with a bright side. Always remember that there is a bomb in Gilead. Always. So in closing, I will ask a question. Is there a situation when you question God's delaying tactics? He's taking so long to do the right thing for me. 
But delay does not mean denial is coming through. Despite our brokenness, our dark clouds in the way, he will make a bright way. He said in Jeremiah, I have a plan for you. Right now, God is putting that plan into effect. So hang on. God's plan is in effect. So hang on. Do not be dissuaded by harbingers of doom. The fellow is not going to happen and so on. God's blessing is there with your name on it. Norman Hutchinson said, it makes no difference what you are going through. <clears throat> you are going to make it. God's going to see you through. <clears throat> Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test. It won't last always. Get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. Get ready for your miracle. I know you have been hurting deep down inside. Let me encourage you. It's going to be all right. Troubles and trials come to make you strong. Keep on believing. You keep holding on. God's got a blessing with your name on it. God's got a blessing with your name on it. Amen. 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 Now, if there's someone who feels as if they cannot hold on any longer, come forward and put it to Jesus. He's here with a blessing with your name on it. Expect a miracle. Surprise! God has a blessing for you. So if you need prayers, you may come to the altar at this time. God's got a blessing. And your name is on that blessing. So come and take that blessing. <clears throat> put your trials and your tribulations, put them together and put them to Jesus. a bright side somewhere there's a bright side somewhere <laughs> there's a bright side somewhere eternal and righteous God here we are before you, oh God. There are so many trials, tribulations, all sorts that's going on in our lives. Our lives are right in front of you, oh God. Will you promise, oh God, that you will take us through? So we are presenting them to you, oh God. Some of them are great, some are small. But oh God, we thank you for bringing us here. Joseph said, it's God who sent me here. So I'm telling them this morning that it's God who sent you here. We thank you, God, for sending us here this morning so we can get your blessings and we can share your blessings with others. We pray, O God, that you will stretch your hand forth and touch each one at the altar this morning. A special touch. Shake us, oh God. Shake us, oh God. So that we realize and know that you are there. Shake us, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you will bless us, oh God. Give us a special hug this morning. We pray, oh God, that those who are not here this morning, that they can hear the sound of my voice and they can be blessed too. So we reach out to you this morning, oh God. 
cleanse us, oh God. Heal our brokenness. At times, oh God, we are so broken. We are so broken that we think we cannot be healed. But God, we know that you can put us together. Whatever is broken, you, the mighty God, can put us together. So put us together this morning, oh God. Touch our relatives and our friends. We ask your oh God to reach out to our pastor where he is this morning. Give him a special blessing, oh God. Those members of the church who cannot come out this morning because of illness or because they failed to just get up and come out. Get them up, oh God. Like how you got us up this morning. Get us up, oh God. And help us, oh God, so we can sing and praise and lift our hands and not be ashamed of calling on you. Not be ashamed of telling others what a mighty God we serve. Heal us, oh God. We ask, oh God, to make this church strong. Make it stronger. We ask, oh God, to continue to rain down your blessings on us. Rain it down, oh God. Rain down your blessings as you rain down that fire that, that, that Elisha was waiting on when he called on you and said, let the people know that you are God and you rain down fire. Fire. Burn us, oh God. Burn out all the evil that tried to surround us, oh God. So we call on you, O oh God, let the Holy Spirit burn like fire in our souls. Bless us all, O oh God, and as we go to our homes, take us home safely, O oh God. Cover us as we travel. We ask you, O oh God, to bless our homes, enter into our homes wherever we are, so that when we get home, you are there waiting for us. We pray, O oh God, that you will continue to bless this church. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love, and for each blessing we lift our hearts in praise without a doubt we know that we have been revived when we shall leave sweet heavenly dove stay right here with us us with your love and for each blessing we lift our hearts in praise without a doubt we know we have been revived voices and say praise him praise him don't be afraid to say praise him don't be afraid that somebody is looking at you just praise him praise him praise him don't be afraid the 
that somebody is going to say something, just praise him. Praise him. We came through a week that was somewhat good and somewhat bad and we come here this morning just praise him thank him he's the mighty God we were so tired yesterday that we thought we couldn't come back here this morning where is sister Cora she said she don't think she can't make it this morning but we thank God that she made it after all that work yesterday God is good Yes, God is good. God is good. Listen up. I know Taj is going to say it's time. It's over. <laughs> okay. Opportunities for ministry. We have on our prayer list, we have our bulletins. Please take your bulletins home. And remember, for all of these members of the church and others, that we need to pray for them okay we have birthdays this morning sister geraldine brooks and sister rose shaw the 25th this week yes sister rose shaw you remember for months Sister Shaw couldn't come and raise her hand. But thanks for the Benjamins who pick her, pick her up every Sunday morning now and bring her to church. She lost her husband. We lost our dear brother. But she's here praising God. She's here praising God. All right. Sister Catherine Dick, where are you? Sister Catherine. Where are you? Hiding? Uh -oh. <laughs> Sister Catherine, hiding the sin. Praise God that we have Sister Catherine this morning. She's always there making sure that we have their names and welcoming people at the door. And she's always here on first Sundays to prepare our table, our communion table. Thank you. And we wish you all happy birthday. Anybody else in the congregation that we should wish happy birthday? Oh, <laughs> Brother Pete? Well, I was going to welcome you back to church, Brother Pete, but it's your birthday, so we just want to thank you for coming. And we just want to thank God for bringing you out of the hospital and making you strong enough to be here this morning. All right? And thanks for Sister Pete, those by your side. By your side. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Let us see. All those who haven't been here for a long time. Anybody else not been here for a long time? All right. What about visitors this morning? Not guests? Please stand. All right. We have two guests this morning. Just a minute. Good morning, Westchester. Morning. I am not a stranger to Westchester. Um, but this morning, my daughter and I, uh, Dion, my name is Lisa Blucher Robinson. And uh, we decided to come and worship with you this morning. Yes. <laughs> but I'm no stranger, no, by no so. means at all. <laughs> so you have a blessed Sunday, and you will see us again. All right. All right. Thank you, Sister Lisa. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else? No. There was a brother here last week from Liberia. He didn't come back today. He's promised me. <laughs> is that a promise is a comfort to a fool? All right. Is there, is out there? No? 
Who else is there? Mike. Mike. Somebody is pointing somewhere down here. Okay, all right. So we are all regulars. Yes, regular worshipers. I just want to extend thanks to all those who served this morning, the ushers who served so our oh, brother. Who is at the door this morning? Who is at the door this morning? Brother Saunders is back. Thank you. Th okay, Brother Saunders. I got to give thanks for um, a safe journey back here after two weeks. And um, yesterday morning, when I was coming in, um, actually what happened now, we pray for guidance and protection wherever we go. And um, what happened yesterday morning is like um, when we go to the store to buy something and the price reduced, we feel good. Doing that? So when I woke come in yesterday morning to the airport, there's this truck and the car overtake a whole line of traffic. And to give the car space, I have to come off the road. And when I get off the road, there's a tire that's blown out with the car I was driving. So thank God, nothing happened except the tire. So that's my saying. The price reduced because it could be worse. So it's only just the time. There's a bright side. Yes. God provided yes, a bright side. A bright side. Bright side. Yes. And we want to give thanks to Brother Taj and Sister Carleen and Brother Meyer here for technology handling. Right? And we want to thank the organist and the drummer and Brother Shaw. Here, brother um, Gong's here. Oh, brother Shaw is in my head. <laughs> and brother Gong's here for providing music for us. And for our dear master, Hezekiah. Yeah. What a voice. What a voice. God is good. God, God given him such a wonderful voice and that he can use it to praise God. Amen. Use his voice to praise God. We just want to call on him and he says, you can sing next Sunday or whatever. And he said, yes. He's just ready. So we just want to ask God's blessing on him and all the young men. Challenging out there for them, you know. Yes. Very challenging. Okay. And so we want to thank them and the ministers who served this morning. We just want to thank you. I'm leaving out. Hmm? Thank you very much, and Jada. Thank you for capably reading the scripture for us. All right, good, good. Thumbs up, thumbs up. And anybody else? All right. So, yes, yes, sir. Thank you for responding. In <laughs> that little one there. Thank you for responding during the um, children's moment. So this morning we are going. Oh, yesterday was a, um, a, a yard sale or flea market, and it went very well. It would be better if we had seen some more of our church people, and our church people would have invited others to come. But we did very well. We did very well. So we just want to thank those who came and thank those who serve from we, we were here on monday to get the things organized and we we're here early saturday morning to get the things priced and tagged it was a lot of work so 
We just want to thank those who work on that project. And so we have come to the end of our service and we will now stand and sing the closing hymn, Never Alone. No, never alone. Please stand, everybody, and we'll sing No, Never Alone. Okay? <laughs>
God. Hallelujah. He promised never, 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 never. He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. He promised never to leave me alone. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Never leave me alone. Always be by our side. Whatever we are going through, it will soon be over. It will soon be over. There's going to be a bright side. Please raise your hands for the, for the benediction. And the benediction will be sung. And it will be the same tune as we started this morning. <laughs>